What's up guys, it's Dakota, welcome back for another Happy Homebrew Wednesday. So, last Saturday was brew day for me. I used my new mash tun for the first time. It came out, well, ended up doing an IPA. Uh, it smells great, it's fermenting right beside me right now. Uh, brew day went really smooth. Um, only thing was, I kind of a little bit bummed out about. Uh, got to take my final gravity reading, well my starting gravity reading, so I'm not 100% sure how my efficiency was. It was a really long day. Uh, cooling it down took forever. Um, well, I have a buddy over here for his second brew. Um, he ended up doing a, a Belgian, a uh, Belgian ale with a little bit of uh, uh, orange peel in it, but he doesn't have a wart chiller, he's fairly new, so I let him use my wart chiller and it just, uh, it just ended up being a really long day, so uh, I think I was just ready to get over it and uh, kind of forgot to do one of the most important part, especially for my new mash tun and, uh, you know, trying to dial it on the efficiency and what, but next brew day, um, not this weekend, but next weekend I'm actually going to brew again. Uh, some family members are going to come home for my graduation and uh, I thought it, we're gonna, you know, uh, just hang out around the house, eat food back home, and uh, figure why not brew? It'd be cool. It's something I like to do. Um, and I know some of the family members would want to see me brew and kind of learn about it. So that's plans. But let's take a quick view of it, huh? Actually, it is literally right beside me. Uh, this is a runner's blanket, so I used to keep the light out because I'm next to the uh, window here. As you guys can see. Might be a little bit hard for you guys to see, but it's sitting at a 64, 63 degrees. Um, some of the yeast particles are still moving around. You guys might not be able to see it. Some of the chrysin is starting to drop finally. It was to up about here and it's dropping quite a bit. And as far as bubbling, not too much action. <laughs> It's uh, maybe one bubble every 10 to 15 seconds, but most of you guys know, just because it's not just because it's not bubbling doesn't mean it's not fermenting. So I'll take a uh, gravity reading probably here in about another two days and uh, monitor it from there to see if it's dropping. Uh, got here, Chad came over on brew day. Sorry, Chad, about the sealer. It <laughs> didn't work. Got your own, so that works out. But uh. A little bit of not great lace, guys. Uh, a couple bottles of uh, Chad's extract IPA he brewed a couple weeks ago, I believe. Um, so looking forward to those. Um, oh, also right here, guys. Jumping all over the place today. Um, I did get these for the IPA. Um, they are French oak chips, medium roast. Um, I'm debating about putting these in the secondary while I dry hop it. Um, I figured. That I had Southern Tears uh, Unearthy, and it was oak aged, and it was a great, phenomenal IPA. I like the uh, the oakiness you get from it, slight tanning, the tannins, you get slight tannin flavor from the oak, but uh, it was a great brew. And uh, I'm debating about putting these in or not. Uh, when I check my gravities, or when I rack it over, I'm going to take a little, uh, obviously, a gravity reading. But I, uh, take a little sample, see how I like it, see if I taste. Uh, Still depending on the oak, I kind of would just like a nice refreshing IPA to drink, kind of how this turns out. If not, maybe, you know, put a little twist into it in these oak chips. If not, probably save them. Here's the thing, guys. You guys use oak chips. Let me know what you do to sanitize them. I've read so many different things. Some people boil them, some people steam them, some people throw them as uh, bourbon and, you know, vodka and all that kind of stuff. Um, or just throw them right in. Um, I was probably I, I trying to figure out why the star sand wasn't working. Maybe it didn't soak through all the, the um, chips all the way through the wood, so it doesn't sterilize them completely through. Um, a lot of people do the bourbon because they like bourbon barrel age, but uh, I just want a clean oak flavor, so maybe I'll do the vodka. Or possibly, possibly steam them. I know uh, oil them, you might get some, some flavors from the wood you don't necessarily want, so I'm kind of trying to steer away from that. So let me know what you guys do do to possibly do something. So, next brew, like I said, next Saturday with the family, it is going to be, I'm on the fence here, um, Lightning Google's Shamashani, awesome beer. 
awesome, awesome beer. Uh, wouldn't mind trying that. Uh, had to do just some research to see how to get the lemonade or the lemon aspect in, into it. Just because cool. uh, they say they do half lemonade, half beer. I'm not too sure about that, but it's they probably do because it's a filtered beer, so the yeast is out of it. But for us homebrewing, that might be a little bit hard. But uh, by kegging, I should have a problem. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I'd love to do that. Uh, might do some more research onto it, or I would not mind trying doing uh, uh, Sam Adams. Uh, they have a cherry wheat. I don't know if you guys have ever had that. Pretty damn good, too. Both those beers, wheat beers, uh, very refreshing, light for uh, summer and springtime. So, what am I doing one of those? Uh, so, that's next, and then hopefully pumpkin beer after that. Still wanting to do the pumpkin beer. Just uh, family coming down. I figured the pumpkin might be a little bit of a mess, and uh, it would drag out the brew day a little bit longer than that, so so I can still visit with people and everything else. But that's the plan, guys. Uh, what else? Um, BH Brewing and Chad. Uh, both of you guys said I was going to do this eventually, and I actually did end up doing it. Um, kind of give you a little hint here. This is not the stout. My uh, my Java stout keg. This is actually with number two. <laughs> so I uh, I pulled the part. Uh, obviously, I got another keg the other day. Uh, excited for that. It actually does fit into my uh, little uh, cooler, my little fridge I have. It's perfect for two for two kegs. I have to move the light, but other than that, it's perfect. I'll probably show a video on that later on once I get a beer in this and put it in the fridge. Um, pulled it apart. It's ball lock. Um, put everything in PBW, cleaned it really good, put some PBW in the bottom of it because it still had a little bit of pop in it. So I uh, got it looking great and inside looks looks great. Um, another thing I did do to hook it up with my regulator, because I just have a single regulator, I was tied to, I was torn because I was going to either uh, get the the uh, connections to it where you can, uh, it kind of, you hook your CO2 tank up to it and it splits off from it. Technicality, I cannot think of it for to save my life right now. Um, or you can just get a T-valve, which just splits off into two, so that I could put, do two different kegs. Um, those are two routes I wanted to possibly, I was going to try to do, but I wound up and ended up getting a add-on regulator. So, pretty much what this is, guys, the gauge on my regulator is hooked up to my CO2 tank. Remove it, this screws into there, a little Teflon tape. Teflon tape on the gauge for the uh, CO2 tank, put it on this one. This one has a pressure relief valve, so when there's nothing in it, I can turn all the valves off, connect it to this one, and then purge it to make the, uh, the gauges drop. But uh, that's nice. Um, I was going back and forth between getting that and one of these, but I figured with hell, uh, this is, I think, 10 bucks more, maybe a little bit more, maybe 15 bucks more, but I don't know. Um, but it's kind of nice because I can, right now, I can have two Craig's Max. That's all I can have here. Uh, with my setup, but that's for me, that's great. That's all I was planning on getting. Um, so I can have one set to 10, 12 psi drink out of it while I got a new keg in there carving on the same CO2 tank. Perfectly fine. Have it set up to 30, have it set whatever I wanted to, you know, of course, carve it at. So, yeah, that's that's why I ended up going with the, the add on regulator because this is my current setup. That's all I can have maxed out. So, why not do that? So, I can do different pressures if I want to. If I ended up doing different beer styles, and definitely. You know, once that different PSI is, you get different levels of carbonation and, you know, how it contributes to the mouthfeel and the taste of the beer and whatnot. And also with the carving. The carving is kind of the main thing, too. One carving, one drinking, perfect. So, yeah, so that's it's a big thing for me. Uh, very big thing for me. Didn't think it was going to end up happening, but uh, Chad, me and Chad have been talking about it for a little bit. And then uh, BH Brewing keeps commenting when I show little videos of my keg that, you know, Expecting to see a nice keg here soon, and uh, did definitely break down. It's gonna be nice to have two, beer, two beers on tap. One was nice, now it's gonna be nice to have two. We can change it up. If I have friends over, I can have something more for me, uh, more more towards you know extreme kind of beer styles. Uh, maybe we even have a Russian Imperial Stout or something like that on tap. You know, something to you don't drink a lot of, but it's nice to sit back and have a glass of it. And then I can have like a pale ale or you know IPA or something like that on the other tap, which it'll be nice definitely to have on tap. So. I feel like I'm talking fast. <laughs> um, so that's it, guys. That is it for my brew day. Pretty big for me. Uh, the uh, IPA probably here in two days. So 
two, three days-ish. Probably three days, because that'll be a week. So it'll be a week in primary. I'll check the gravity to make sure. And then probably five days try hopping. So I've, I've done that a couple times, and I really like the five-day effect. Um, with dry half, and you get a nice, a nice aroma from it, and uh, I think five days works out great. I don't get much grassiness or anything like that from the hops. But I am considering the oak. If you guys use it in IPA, let me know what you've done. How many ounces you use too? That's another thing. Um, I was thinking maybe an ounce and a half of these. I don't want to put too many because I don't want them to be overbearing. So I want to drink it fresh, but not being an IPA, so I don't want it to overkill it. Um, it's only been on there for five days, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too bad, if I even do that. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you guys did uh, a Summer Shandy clone from Line Google, or a Cherry Wheat Ale from uh, Sam Adams, if you guys ever ventured off in those kind of brews before, let me know what you think, um, if you could possibly even recipes. Uh, preferably all grain, but you know, I'll look at extract. I wouldn't mind doing extract, it'd be nice and easy. Um, we'll, from all grain, be a little bit uh, faster paced for, for the family owner. But rambling on and on, guys, uh, I want to thank all the new subscribers, um, everyone that's commenting, you know, liking, you know, appreciate it. Puts a little smile on the face, get on the wall. Um, need to catch up on videos, that's what I plan on doing now. This video is getting super long, so I want to cut it, cut it now. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Well, maybe sooner than that. Maybe I'll throw in a beer review here. But, uh, We'll see you next week, alright? Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.